Okay, what we have here is a series of 3D printed parts to augment the ES IEXOS 100 EQ mount. The first part being an azimuth adjuster, uh, which is kind of a neat accessory for this mount. Second being a top mount accessory, uh, i.e. laser mount platform. And then the parts for that platform and the laser itself to shoot through the polar axis. Okay, so to get right to the nitty gritty, a lot of people have reported problems controlling this mount. And I agree, it's not the most user friendly, but it is quite accurate when dialed in and works incredibly well. Primarily, I have found when used exclusively with a Linux type operating system. In fact, I'm using it with a Raspberry Pi uh, using the free Astroberry software. Uh, that's what I'm pointing to here. Uh, and it's also connected to a bunch of devices. I use it all remotely uh, because it all works wirelessly. It's incredible. Uh, and I'll explain the pieces and include some of the links in this video uh, down below. So uh, amongst that is uh, the Raspberry Pi, which I bought for about 85 bucks. I'll link to it. And then a $15 GPS module, which I'm pointing to here. Uh, it's also using a wired game controller for manual input at the mount. Super easy to set up. Uh, again, all going into this tiny Raspberry Pi, no computer connected. Uh, I'm then, of course, using the azimuth mount 3D printed part uh, that I've modified to make it work better with this system. Uh, and it works incredibly well, as well as the adjustable laser mount for shooting a laser through the polar axis, which we all know this mount does not include an alignment scope. So that takes care. Actually, we'll talk a little bit more about the control system. So the Raspberry Pi I have here is a Linux operating system uh, with memory and RAM and video cards. and It's a full computer and you can load any operating system you'd like, Ubuntu on it, or any Linux operating system, and there are a ton. So it's a pretty adept basic computer. With that said, you've probably heard of the ASI Air device on the astronomy market, or the StellarMade, or the ATIC base. Well, basically, those are all proprietary versions of what I've put on here, which is the free version of Astroberry, uh, which is an OS specifically designed for astronomers. And it comes with some specific software and is quite good and ready for prime time. I love it, in fact, and I've learned it very recently from scratch. Uh, and it has certain software that are very important. One of them is KSTARS, which is a full astrometry app uh, with a planetarium program, plate solving that works incredibly well, for focus routines, uh, polar alignment routines that are, again, awesome in conjunction with the plate solving, um, et cetera, et cetera. It controls the mount. It controls the GPS. It controls every aspect of this and handles go-tos with the plate solving and works unbelievable. This mount is tracks incredibly well. Um, it, the, the Astroberry server also comes with PhD guide with all, which although KSTARS has a guiding component to it, it allows you to use PhD if you'd prefer. And, uh, it seems to be working best right now. And I'll go into more detail at some other time, but that's the basic system that I've done for about uh, 95 bucks if you include the GPS unit, uh, which is quite a savings over the ASI Air and etc. All they have great features. I think this has got just as many, if not more, and I'm truly enjoying it at this point. On to the 3D parts. Starting with an azimuth adjuster uh, with a bridge over it so it's very strong. Uh, whereas this is somebody else's model but it wasn't strong enough in my opinion. Great model. Uh, just if you over tightened, which you shouldn't do anyway, but if you did at all they would break the uh, the tightening bolts. Um, you'll see when you go to use it. Meanwhile I built a bridge on it. Uh, you should print these with a high infill 90, 99 make them super strong. Uh, they should all print in the right orientation, but this one you could adjust different ways for your own needs. I have built-in supports for all these things that are easy to pop out in large holes. So the azimuth adjuster on the right and in the left is an extension arm, so you can mount many things to it uh, and adjust it up or down on the mount. 
The azimuth adjuster uses a single 8 millimeter screw, as you can see, that I have it inside the, that single hole on the adjuster. Uh, it's like a 20 or 25 millimeter length, uh, anything you have laying around. This is a top mount for mounting a laser to the polar axis at almost any latitude. It either uses the thumb screws to attach or on the top has some locations to put some zip ties if you want to attach it that way. I always like to have multiple ways to do things. Uh, and also there are little wings on this one as well, like on the azimuth mount, uh, that you can mount this extension arm in various orientations on to hang things from. The purpose of this was to have a laser pointer able to shoot through the tiny hole in the eye the XOS mount. Here I'm showing the knurled screws. They're four millimeter hex uh, bolts. And uh, they're, the holes are included, but they should be tapped. Uh, so they're in the 3D print and they'll print pretty darn close, but they should be tapped to make them really easy to use. Uh, so here's a four millimeter tap. And uh, I'm just showing you, you know, kind of how to do it. I actually if you're careful, I just put it in my little handheld drill and very carefully uh, go straight in a little ways and straight out a little ways. There's, you don't leave it hanging there to strip it. You just kind of zip in and zip out. Done. And then when you put the uh, the four millimeter hex head with the uh, thumb screw cap, which I'll include a 3D print for. Again, somebody else's model, but I'm just putting it all in this package because I use them all the time in astronomy. Uh, and as I'm pointing out where you can put zip ties, and that one's at an angle, to uh, to mount it. And I'll show you pictures of how it all mounts uh, in a minute here. Uh, so, yeah, that's the top mount. And then here we have uh, a laser pointer holder, again, using thumb screws and, and neural knobs, etc. It uh, works great. I have been using these uh, with Cinta mounts, which I'll include a link to, or a 3D print as well in this package. Um, for these on all sorts of my scopes, using them with Cinta mounts, but I modified this to work with, th with uh, this creation that I've come up with here, to be able to position any type of laser pointer that you may have, big ones, uh, standard ones like this, I have a few of them. Uh, in this and have it align quite well and and fairly repeatedly as long as you don't move it. Uh, you're only looking for one good time to get a, get a good alignment and you're good to go. And I've been using this mount with this method here uh, a few times now and it's worked great. And I'll include some pictures at the end. Meanwhile, I'm just using uh, uh, probably M5s or M6 screws here and with whatever I have laying around, a few washers to hold it in place. I've, as I've said, I've left some of the holes in some of these prints large to accommodate any kind of screw you could have with various nuts and washers they have laying around in the, in the uh, tool drawer at home, <laughs> not assuming everybody has a shop. Uh, so you can probably make this work with anything. And as I've also said, I like to have many variations of ways to do things. Uh, so we have uh, we have the device assembled here, half of it anyway, or two thirds. Tighten it up, and this portion of it, uh, I like to use nylon nuts for if you can, so it'll stay. I don't have them on it here, but I did uh, put them on it, um, so it'll stay at the tension you want. This one is an eight millimeter. Uh, by 30 millimeter or 35 and uh, this one I like to just you know leave hand tight so I can adjust it at will and this is kind of the primary single screw that I adjust to get basic location for the laser pointer and then I use the knurled screws front and back to align the laser right down the center and there you go and that's how it sits on there and it's quite rigid um, and you just point that at the pole star as close as you can get it. And so here's the azimuth adjuster with wings that I put on as well as a bridge over the top to make it very strong. And here I'm showing that you insert M5 nuts 
and you can use a wrench to tighten them in place and five nuts and there are slots for them in the azimuth adjuster print and they'll pop right down in there and stay in there quite well and that gives you a place to put your M5 uh, bolts and I put a little wing nut on them with another nut to lock it in place so I have a, a twist easy way to do it and then one for the other side as well and that handles the azimuth adjustment and it works just like it would on any other EQ mount uh, it's just as strong with that bridge on there again print near 3d prints at a high infill for this stuff make them super strong uh, these were printed for instance the azimuth adjuster was printed at 99 percent their stuff printed 70 or 80 percent no need to have it super strong but uh, pretty, you know, you want it wicked strong. And there you can see the 8mm screw that it takes, and that's a short one. So what's this thing? Uh, the, that's the, the stopper for the hole. You can get rid of it. I've included a tiny little plug that will slide right into the front of it, the same way that that did, and it has a little hole in it that you want to get your laser shooting through, and it just it improves your adjustment. So that in conjunction with the azimuth mount 3D print, which you can see here, couple images of it in place uh, as well as the top mount 3d print that goes right on the iOxys 100 uh, then the zip tie location when it's in place if you choose to use that I choose to use the uh, set screws here which you can see I'm tightening up the left and the right and it's designed to fit around the existing plugs and connectors so they, they, they can be removed and it doesn't interfere with them at all at that point we can mount the extension arm uh, and the laser holder and start to put the laser into position. And you can see it here. Uh, allows you a lot of granularity in your connection and you know your ability to align it. A couple of other shots of it in place on the mount. Now that won't come off if the set screws are on there, uh, so it works really well. And you can just pop it off easily with the set screws. So here you can see the laser in place. It's pointed through, but it's not quite in the center. Uh, so I've adjusted a little bit to get more in the center. And then I'll put in my little plug just to verify that I'm there. It's for uh, my own well-being, peace of mind. And you can see it here in place. And final setup, uh, ASI 294 MC Pro, ASI 120 MC, an E focuser on a Stellar View 80 Raptor carbon fiber, uh, 50 millimeter Orion guide scope, and a few other little bells and whistles make up the setup here. So that's the basic setup on conjunction with the IEXOS mount and uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 that I have with the free Astroberry software on it that I um, burned to a SD card and simply booted the Raspberry Pi from. And then you can go online and learn all you need about it. I will include in the description some links to the basics, basic setup steps, not everything, but you know the general 10,000 foot view. Uh, you'll have to have some talent and ability to get this going. It's not plug and play, but it uh, doesn't take too much to get it working. And when it does, you know, it's great. This is a, a new, very lightweight system that fully assembled I can pick up and carry outside without hurting my back, uh, unlike the LX200 to the right of the mount. So overall, uh, you know, I'm very pleased. So obviously there's a whole bunch of different skill sets that need to be uh, involved here, 3D printing and such, but if you can utilize these things, you can save yourself some bucks and uh, and do what I've done and get all the functionality that you need out of this really inexpensive mount. And I think you'll see in the upcoming first light image that it's, uh, it's doing quite well. I look forward to imaging with it in the future and I'll be sure to report back. So yeah, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and uh, select the notifications so you're always aware of when I release new content. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side.